Ave Maria, this is Father Isaac Mary Raye from the Fatima Center. Uh, let us begin with a prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Remember, O most compassionate Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin, of virgins, our mother. To thee we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. Mother, the word incarnate, despise our petitions, but in thy mercy, hear and answer. A Lady of Fatima, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Francis and St. Pio, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. On the Feast of the Ascension, I spoke about how Our Lady of Fatima came to us and how the angel of Fatima came before Our Lady came. And in encouraging and requesting that the children would pray and do penance for souls. That most souls go to hell, Our Lady said, because no one will pray or do penance for them. And so the whole purpose of the talk to try to encourage all of us to unite with Christ and Our Lady at the cross, to carry our cross, and to offer our sufferings up to Our Lady totally, so that she may save souls and souls may be converted. And we know this is the will of God. So I remember years ago, reading about Father Matteo. He was the founder of the home enthronement. He was a very holy priest, and he was giving talks to some seminarians. And my old spiritual director was one of the seminarians, and he told me this. And he said, Father Matteo, repeat what I'm going to say over and over and over again. And he told them, so you want to be priest? He says, answer this question. He goes, oh, well, he said this, that someone has to pay the price for souls, for the conversion of souls. And he says, so the question for you future priests, are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to unite your sufferings with Christ? Are you willing to be not only a priest when you're ordained, but also victim? Because Christ is priest and the victim. And we are called to imitate Christ. And that's a big question. So for us, all of us that have loved ones away from God, away from the church, that's the question. Are we willing to pay the price? Of course, Christ paid the ultimate price. Uh, price. Christ died on the cross it makes it possible for all men to be saved. But he still chooses us to participate in redemption, not only our, all, our own redemption, but even to help get other souls to heaven. So I gave you quotes directly from the angel, directly from Our Lady, and how Our Lady questioned Sister Lucia and the, and the other, uh, Francesco and Jacinta, if they were willing to su suffer, and their answer was yes. And they answered very promptly. They didn't hesitate. They didn't hesitate. They were willing to suffer for souls. And Our Lady told them that they would suffer much, but the grace of God would be their comfort. And so I want to quote today a lot from uh, one of my favorite blesseds. His name is Blessed Marmion. And he was a Benedictine. Very, very holy, holy priest and a great theologian. And uh, his works are phenomenal. I highly, highly recommend. He wrote books, Christ the Life of the Soul, Christ the Priest. There's a book, Suffering with Christ, which I, which I uh, refer to in this talk. And he is one of the greatest spiritual writers uh, of the church. And so in this book, Suffering with Christ, I took from some of his letters and he basically said that there's some three basic dispositions uh, for a soul that wants to suffer with Christ, that wants to cooperate with Christ in suffering. And that means suffering for the conversion of souls, to be in union with Christ. No slave is greater than the master once again. The Lord gave us the command, if you want to be my disciple, you must deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. So these three dispositions are very important, and I want to give them to you today. So the first one 
which is very difficult, at least for me it is. It's, it's silent patience, silent patience, to remain silent in the face of uh, trials and tribulations, to remain silent when people are calumniating us, not to strike back. And we see our Lord practice meekness constantly, which means turn the other tree, don't strike back. Our Lord did this. Patience means long suffering. And so this is one a very difficult thing for most of us is to remain silent in in these times. We see how our Lord gave many examples of that, especially in his passion. They spit in his face. He could have struck them down and he didn't he could have turned away, he could have walked away. He didn't. He tolerated that for love of his father, for love of us to save us. He was silent before Herod, who treated him like a fool. And he submits to the authority of Pontius Pilate, who ultimately had him crucified because the Jews cried out for it. And so our Lord remained silent many, many times. When Caiaphas, the high priest, was yelling, if you are the son of God, come down from the cross. Did he come down for the cross? No, he was silent. And so this is what our Lord is calling us to do, to embrace the cross, to remain silent in these times. St. Paul tells us, in my weakness, Christ is most powerful. And we have to believe that. So it is by practicing this patience and silence, okay, that we share in the sufferings of Christ. We want to be able to imitate Christ in his passion totally. And therefore, you must meditate on his passion constantly. All the great saints say to meditate on his passion every day. It's the most fruitful meditations we know. So we always have to look at Christ. When Christ went into the garden of Gethsemane, he was suffering tremendously. And we know that he was even ble bleeding blood through his paws. And they say, scientists, uh, doctors, that that can happen, but it's so, so painful. And our Lord in his human nature didn't want to suffer. He didn't want to go to the cross. He said, not my will be done, but your will be done. He said, Father, if it's possible, let this chalice pass from me. But he submitted to God's will. So we want to enter more and more into this great silence blessed mommy and tells us number one he said silence of the tongue number two silence of the movement of the passions so the tongue of course you know when it, it, we have to train ourselves we have to want to do this for love of god that we don't start murmuring and complaining and calling to our friends and whoever we do and be silent and we have to pray for this because it ain't only we can only do this with the grace of God. And then the movements of the passion, when we feel that anger coming up, we have to control it. Don't give in to our passions. And the last, he says, silence of reasons and reflection on others. So when other people afflict us uh, in many ways, when people, like I said, calumniate us, accuse us of things that we're not guilty of we should not go into reflection and why are they doing this and we should consider it a grace that god is letting us participate who was calumniated more than jesus christ they called him a drunk a liar they said he was possessed by demons so this is what we have to so enter more and more, he says, blessed mommy, into great silence, number one, of the tongue, number two, of the movements of the passion, and number three, of reasons and reflections on others. Because the more you reflect on others, we, when we do this, what happens is we take our eyes off of Christ. I love that scripture when Christ was walking on the water in the storm and Peter saw him. It was a wicked storm and high waves and and Peter said to our Lord, call, Lord, call me to yourself. And, and he said to Peter, come. And Peter walked, jumped out of the boat. 
and was walking on over on top of the waves, the great waves. And then it says that he was distracted by the wind. And he took his eyes off of Christ for one second. And what happened when he did that? We know he started to sink. He was starting to drown. And he, he cried out in humility, Lord, save me for I'm perishing. And our Lord didn't let him drown, of course. Our Lord came, grabbed him by his arm, and put him on the safety of the boat. Well, that goes for us, too. When we get distracted, when we put our eyes on others, when we put our eyes too much on ourselves, too, we're going to fall. And so what we got to do is recollect ourselves and refocus, be humble like Peter, and call on the Lord. Say, Lord, help, help me. I'm perishing. Help me get my eyes off my neighbor, myself. We think too much about ourselves. The biggest problem in our life, too, is not our neighbors. It's us, ourselves. So remember that scripture and then refocus on Christ. Call out to him and he will be there for you. The second disposition, Blessed Marmion says, in, for suffering those that want to unite with Christ is to have generous love. Everything we do should be for the love and the glory of God. We know we know that that's the Jesuits mo, uh, motto for the greater love for the glory of God. It's beautiful. Everything we do from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to bed, everything should be with the motive to please God. To, to do it for the love of God, that everything we do is a service to God. If we could keep that before us all day and at all times, we will not sin. So in the morning, that's why we tell the church, is encourage all of us that when we wake up in the morning, the saints tell us, make that morning offering right away. Praise God. Thank him for giving you another day to serve him, to glorify him. So we want to love God with our whole heart, our whole soul, our whole mind. We want to glorify him in every little thing we do. And we must not put limits and stipulation on how much, how far we will go. We should pray that we could love God more than all the saints and angels combined together. That everything we do, once again, will be for his glory. It is only love for Christ that will make it possible for us to pick up our cross and carry it. If you don't love Christ, you're not going to carry the cross. If you don't love Christ, you're not going to uh, suffer for souls. And so but when, when we love Christ, we will carry the cross. Because people that try to do this, they won't last long. They won't even last uh, an hour. Okay. So the cross, and when we pick it up, that's what unites us to Christ totally. Let us love the cross, and if and say, Blessed Marmion says this, let us love the cross, and if not the cross itself, at least the hand of Jesus who lays it upon our shoulders, for his hand gives us the grace to carry it. That is beautiful. So he's saying, if you, you know, if you don't love the cross itself, love the hand who puts it on. Christ gives us the crosses that we need. And when Christ puts a cross upon our shoulder, he lets us go through any kind of suffering. It's a purification that he's allowing to happen. He wants to purify us. So if someone comes up to you and insults you, uh, calls you horrible names or calumniates you, most likely your pride is kicking up. And then Christ will allow this person, his permissive will, to come insult you, to humble you. So the question is, so how do we grow in this love for Christ? How do we grow in it? How do we come to the point that we want to really suffer for Christ, that we want to carry the cross for him? Is we Number one is through the holy sacraments that Christ has given the church. Through the Eucharist, receiving the Lord as often as possible in the state of grace. Through the sacrament of confession, by confessing your sins. You know, you don't even have to have any mortal sins on your souls to go to confession. The churches always encourage even devotional confessions. 
But when you go to confession, we all have venial sins. We have confess them, but you have to have sorrow for them. And when we do that by going to confession, we receive the graces to overcome these venial sins. We receive, we grow in sanctifying grace. We grow in love of Christ. So you want to go to the sacraments. You want to confess your sins. I recommend at least once a week. And the church even says, even if you don't have no sins, St. Alphonse says, you could go to confession and renew your sorrow for a past sin, especially if it was mortal. And that will bring uh, contrition and it will bring many graces to you. And this is how we grow in love for Christ. We grow in love for Christ after the sacraments is through prayer. And this is so important. And prayer will help, will dispose us the more we pray to receive the sacraments more fruitfully. The more we pray when we receive the Eucharist, the more desire we have to receive the Eucharist, the more grace we will receive. And so prayer is so important. It's a direct encounter with God, just like the sacraments you directly encounter Christ. In the Eucharist, you eat his flesh, you eat his blood. So many people, you know, uh, you know, relics are a good thing, relics of saint. But I see so many people get so caught up with relics that they don't realize that you can receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ himself. So prayer is, is awesome. Prayer, once again, you, it's a conversation with God. And what's a conversation is you two people that you speak to each other. You speak, but then you listen. The more you pray, the more you meditate on the life of Christ, the more you will grow in love of him. And meditate on the scriptures. Meditate on how Christ reacted in different situations. And it becomes part of you. And that's what we strive to do that. We see in his passion that he's, he's exercising especially the virtue of humility and meekness. And so when you meditate on the passion, when you meditate on the rosary, the sorrowful mystery, pray for those graces to be meek, to be humble. But once again, prayer is an intimate relationship with Christ, God. So please enter into deeper and deeper prayer. The more you pray, the more you will love God, the more you will, and the more he will show you and, and push you along the road to holiness. He'll show you your faults so that you can correct them with his help. Um, and another one, another way to grow in love of Christ is to study. Study the catechism. Study theology. Study, you know, who God is, who Christ is, who the Holy Spirit is. These things, the more knowledge we have of God, the more we will love him. The more we study, the more we'll realize how awesome he is. So, we want to do everything once again and accept everything that God sends us for the love of God. So when Christ sends us these trials, tribulations, we want to accept it with love. It gives us a chance to prove our love for God. It gives us a chance. The third disposition is filial abandonment, that we have to be totally abandoned ourselves to God, that we have to realize that without God, we can do nothing. He says that in the Gospel of John. I am the vine, you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. St. Paul says, I can do all things in him who strengthens me. So... We can't, if you want to, if you think you're going to carry the cross, if you think you're going to suffer for others on your own, it's impossible. So once again, like St. Paul's, I can do all things in him who strengthens me. It tells us in scripture, great is he who's in me than who's in the world. Who's in you? Who's in me? If I'm in a state of sanctifying grace, the Holy Trinity dwells within me. So if God, it says also in scripture, if God is for me, who could be against me? And so we want to totally, totally abandon ourselves to Christ in all situations. We want to know, we have to know that whatever befalls us is because God at least allows it. He says in the scripture, our Lord, that not even a hair on our head can be touched without him permitting it. So these 
dispositions, we must pray for them. Filial abandonment, you know, uh, silence and generous love. If we pray for these dispositions, we, God, will grant them to us. Blessed Mommy, in one day, met with the great St. Paul Pius X, and he begged the Holy Father to give him a text for his own soul. And so the Pope took a holy card and he wrote on the back of the card the following. In all difficult circumstances, think of this. It is the Lord and the it is the Lord and the Lord will be to you a strong helper. So my friends, hopefully you your answer to suffer for souls and to unite souls to be for souls to be converted. Hopefully your answer will be like Sister Lucia, Jacinta, and Francesco will be yes. And in that yes, God will grant us the grace to cooperate with him, to help save souls. Let us continue to draw uh, strength from these messages of Our Lady. She came from heaven to show us the way. She is the star of the sea. And the star of the sea, you know, the sailors, when they sail the North Star that would always guide them. Our Lady guides us, and she guides us home to our Father in Heaven. Thank you, my friends, for all your support. Please continue to pray for the Fatima Center and to support us in any ways possible. Please bow your head for God's blessing. Pax et benedictio Deo omnipotente. Pax, Infiri, Spiritus Santi, descendus super vos, emineret semper. Amen.